Hi everyone, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com and today I'm going to show you how to make cultured cream and many different ways and talk all about cultured cream. This is going to be your comprehensive guide to making cultured cream. This is definitely a nutrient dense food that you're going to want to know how to make for yourself. If you're on the GAPS diet, it is an essential part of following the GAPS diet. If you are not following GAPS, keep watching. This is still for you because it is a very important part of a nutrient dense diet like Nourishing Traditions or Weston A. Price. Very easy once you get the hang of making cultured cream. So I'm gonna jump in and show you how exactly you make it several different ways. Let's also really quickly clear up just a little bit of confusion that there can be about gap sour cream. So sometimes it's called creme fraiche, sometimes it's called gap sour cream, sometimes it's called cultured cream. And depending on where you are in the world, you might be familiar with one or more of those terms. When it comes to the gaps diet and what I'm about to explain here, no matter what way of eating you follow, Cultured cream, creme fraiche, and gap sour cream are all the same thing. On the gaps diet, you do want to make sure that your cream is cultured at least 24 hours because all gaps dairy needs to be casein and lactose free. So culturing it long enough ensures that all of the lactose and casein are pre-digested so that the gaps dairy and gaps sour cream can be lactose free and casein free. So there are four different ways that you can make cultured cream Gap Sour Cream, Creme Fraiche. Uh, going forward, I'm just gonna call it Cultured Cream so I don't have to list them all, but you know they're all the same. Four different ways. The first method, number one, is the culturing on your countertop with just souring raw cream. So if you have, like I do, some raw cream that you have skimmed from the top of good, high quality, healthy raw milk, you can cap it with something a lid or a cloth and let it sit on your counter for at least 24 hours usually to culture into nice thick cream it takes more like two or three days you want it to be at room temperature room temperature is around 70 degrees fahrenheit if your room is warmer than that it's going to culture more quickly if your room is cooler than that it's going to take longer to culture but that's the rule of thumb for all of these methods except for the yogurt method which needs a yogurt maker but anything that's culturing on your counter, usually two to three days at room temperature. The countertop souring method with just raw cream can only be done with raw cream. Do not try that with pasteurized cream. Pasteurized cream does not sour when it sits at room temperature. It spoils or putrefies, and if you do that, you'll get very sick. So if you have good, clean, healthy raw cream, then you know that that will sour and the friendly microbes in there are active and able to take over and culture it in a healthy way and you can get really delicious sour cream that way. The next method that I'm going to talk about is culturing your cream with whey. So you can have whey dripped from soured raw milk, you can have whey dripped from homemade yogurt or homemade kefir. So the process is just to add your two tablespoons of whey into your raw cream, stir it up, Put a lid on it or a cloth and let it sit on the counter and culture. Again, same amount of time, two or three days at room temperature, more or less depending on your room's temperature, but you just watch it and when it's nice and thick, then you know it's done and you can enjoy it and store it in the refrigerator. If you are culturing your cream with whey and you're using raw cream, you don't need to heat it up beforehand. If you're using pasteurized cream, you do need to heat it up in a saucepan on the stove to 180 degrees Fahrenheit, then let it cool down to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, then stir in your whey and let it culture on the counter. So that's what you need to do with pasteurized cream. The only exception is if you're using whey from kefir. Dr. Natasha says that the kefir microbes are powerful enough to where you can go ahead and culture with kefir whey without heating the milk first. But if you're using whey from anything else, it's a good idea to heat up the pasteurized cream first. Don't need to do that with raw cream, no matter what you're culturing with. The next method is to make cultured cream with yogurt. I have a video on my channel where I show how to make yogurt cultured cream. So this is that same method. The amounts again are the same for every one cup of cream you're going to add two tablespoons of yogurt you can have this be a store-bought 
yogurt with no additives or some homemade yogurt that you have. If you are using pasteurized cream, you do want to heat that up before stirring in the yogurt. You heat it up to 180 degrees Fahrenheit bring it down to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, stir in your yogurt, put a lid on it, put it into a yogurt maker for at least 24 hours, and then check on it after the 24 hours when it's nice and thick, then it's ready to enjoy and you can store it in the refrigerator. If you're using raw cream, there's no need to heat it up before adding the yogurt. The last method that I'm going to show you is making cultured cream with kefir. Now, this is my favorite method. This is what I typically will do. I have another video on my channel that I did quite a while back where I showed making cultured cream with kefir grains. And this video that I'm making right now serves also as an update to that one because I no longer make cultured cream with kefir grains. I find that the kefir grains are a lot happier if they're just in milk all the time because cream doesn't quite have enough of those properties in the milk to be able to feed them well enough and keep them happy. And it also, it's very tedious and time consuming to strain the kefir grains out of the cream whenever it's time to take them out and use the cultured cream. So I like this method much better. The amounts again are going to be the same as the other methods. For every one cup of raw cream that you have, you're going to add two tablespoons of kefir. Whether you're using pasteurized cream or raw cream, it doesn't matter. You do not need to heat it up beforehand. You just stir your kefir into your cream. You can put a lid on it or a cloth. Let's also talk about how you decide whether you want a lid or a cloth too. So if you do a lid like this, then that can work great. I like to do it a little bit loosely so that any gases can escape easily. And that can work fine. That's really good if you're very particular about how your cream is gonna come out tasting. If you want a really, I wanna say, mild tasting cultured cream, you can just do a, a lid like that. If you want to encourage yeasts to grow in your kefir, which if you're on gaps or you just want to really populate your body with a lot of friendly yeast, which is a fantastic idea, then having something breathable like this is going to help encourage yeasts to grow in the kefir or kefir cultured cream. So that's how you can decide what way you go with that. You can either put a rubber band to secure it or if it's something that hangs down, I find that that works really well for keeping fruit flies and dust or whatever out of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just show you this method here where I stir my two tablespoons of kefir into my cream and then let it sit on the counter in culture. So this is cream that I skimmed from the top of my raw milk. And then I'm just going to measure out two tablespoons. Of kefir. I do like to always use wood when I'm working with kefir, kefir apparently doesn't like metal very much. I've heard mixed things about this. I hear other people say it doesn't matter, they use metal and they're fine. Um, I just like to play it safe and anytime I'm handling kefir, or especially kefir grains, I stick with wood and avoid metal. So then I'm just gonna stir it gently, put its little covering on, and then let it sit for Usually two to three days is what I find for it to become nice and thick and when it's ready I'll show you what it looks like and then this is how I test and check to see if my cultured cream is ready So I'll just take it and I'll Poke my spoon in this is looking really good. You can see how nice and thick that is You can scoop a nice big dollop out. That's what we're looking for. It's not liquid anymore. It's nice and thick so that's how I know it's done. And when it looks like that, I can start using it and I will move it to the refrigerator to store it. I also wanted to mention this book. It is The Complete Cooking Techniques for the GAPS Diet. It's a fantastic resource for anybody who wants to know how to cook for the GAPS Diet. It is by Chef Monica Corrado. She's a certified GAPS practitioner and known as the GAPS Chef. She was one of my instructors when I did my certified GAPS coach training. And this was our, one of our books that we used for that, but it's available to anybody who wants it. I will have a link down in the description box if you'd like to grab your own copy. I highly recommend it. It talks about all the different ways that you can make sour cream or cultured cream like I just went over. So many other resources for making fermented vegetables, properly preparing nuts and seeds and beans, making meat stock, and then of course culturing dairy and all about GAPS dairy. And like I said, there will be a link down below where you can grab your own copy. 
I hope that you found that helpful. If you have any questions, leave me a comment down below. Check out that description box also for links to free ebooks and other goodies. I have a GAPS diet getting started guide. I also have information on how I can help you follow the GAPS diet as well as a 30 day meal plan for the GAPS diet. I also have a brand new coaching membership. There's already a great group of people in there. We've been having such a great time with our live Q and A's and group Zoom calls. If you're interested in getting a really affordable option for face-to-face -face, um, coaching and community, then I highly recommend checking this out. There will be a link down below where you can check out my new membership. All right, if you did like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with anybody else who you think would find it interesting or helpful. And if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I get out new videos every week on nourishing recipes and natural living. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time, bye.